Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ankush. In our today's video, we are going to discuss about the difference between cache and persist. Whenever you go for an Spark interview, definitely you will have the question based upon the Spark performance tuning. And in order to check the your concept related to the Spark performance tuning, they can ask you the question based upon this cache and persist. So this cache and persist are also useful to increase the performance of your Spark job. Whenever you are running your job, definitely we want to improve the performance of your Spark job. So in that case, we can use this cache and persist. Now when to use that, that is most important thing. So let's say you are having one data set and that data set you are using it frequently. So kind of transformation you are using it on that data set frequently. So what you can do, you can cache that data set, right? So you can cache that data set. So this cache is you can use on the top of RDD data frame as well as on data sets. Now the important question over here is what is the difference between cache and persist? So all those things we are going to see it practically as well as theoretical. So I will show you uh, by showing you that uh, Spark UI platform there the things will be pretty much clear. So before go to my screen Please do like, subscribe and share this channel. So these are the two techniques that I'm going to tell you uh, through which you can increase the performance of your Spark job. So the first technique over here, we called it as a cache. And the second technique, we called it as a persist. Most of the time the people ask you that what is the difference between this cache and the persist. So if you want to write down the cache, the basic syntax is let's say df dot cache and that's it. This is how you can write down your cache. Now if you want to write down the persist, the syntax will be df dot persist and then you need to mention the storage level dot Let's say we have a multiple storage over here. So I'm mentioning like memory underscore only memory or something like that. Okay, there are different different storage levels are there. Now you'll ask me like what is the difference over here? So when I'm saying that I'm going to store my data into the cache, when I'm saying that I want to store my data set into the cache, again it will get stored into the memory only. And when I'm saying that I'm going to persist it with the option memory so both are same only persist with memory persist with memory is equals to cache only because cache don't have any argument we should not pass any we, we don't have the option to pass the argument in cache but in persist we have a different different arguments are there if you see the apache documentation here you can see there are different different storage levels are there which you can mention along with the persist. The first one is memory underscore only. What does it mean? Let's say you have a data set and you want to store that data set only into the memory. Then you can use the parameter called storage level dot memory only. It means your data set will get stored only in the memory and there is a situation that your data set is not getting fit into the memory then the portion of data set which is not getting into the getting fit into the memory will be recomputed on the fly now when you want to store your data set on memory and disk you can again use this storage level so the the portion which is storing on memory again it will go to the memory and the portion which is not fit into the memory it will go on the disk now here on the first two option we have not used any kind of the serialization. Now if you want to serialize the things to compress the data set definitely you can go ahead with the serialization option along with the memory and memory and this both the things are there. Now when you want to store only your data set based upon the disk only you can use this option and there are the options where you can replicate the data set on two node, two cluster node. It's possible by using this option. Memory only underscore two, memory and this two. And the last one is of heap. Now this is just uh, going on. Okay. 
so there are different different storage levels are there along with the persist but when i'm saying with the cache there is no argument so by default cache with memory okay cache with memory is equals to cache with memory means there is no memory option actually so let me write down one more time cache equals to persist with memory persist with memory which is the first argument okay now we are going to see this thing practically like how how we can use this cache and persist so then things will be more good okay so let me open the data bricks so this is the program which i have written over here so what exactly i have done i just created one sequence okay i just created one sequence which written me a rdd and i tried to convert that rdd into the data frame by using this command okay now i have just cache that data frame so df1 dot cache and i'm trying to sh showing you the result okay and let me try to run it so once i'm running it we will get the result and then we are going to see where that data set means this your data frame is getting stored whether it will stored on your memory or it will get stored on your disk okay so that is what we need to see it so let's wait for some time and then we will get the result all right so we got the result and in order to check the storage level i need to go to the spark ui and let me refresh it one more time to get the latest log okay so i got it let me go there and i'm more interested to see the storage area so let's see the storage where it is getting store the data okay so i'm going to the storage and let's see can you see all your data is getting stored on your memory and there are three partition all are cached 100% and all your data is getting stored on your memory only because we just cache the data okay we just cache the data and if you want to see the cache data you need to see the tab like storage okay and this is what we did all right so till now we have seen about the cache and now let's talk about the process so i need to make some changes to this over here so what i'm going to do we got this data frame right this is a data frame one and we just use the cache method so let me just comment this now because i want to use the persist so this is the data frame and let me use the command so what i need to do i also make some changes so df1 dot persist okay i am going to use the persist and one of the argument that we need to pass out of so many arguments are there right so i need to use one of the argument and that is related to the storage area so we have seen a, a different different storage area and out of that uh, i am going to use one of the storage area that is memory only okay so memory yummy i can use the memory only or memory and disk also anything i can use and here we need to call storage level storage level dot like this okay and let me try to run it now let's see all right so we got it before that let me just uh, unpersist the data which was there in the memory only so let me unpersist the data and how to unpersist the data in order to unpersist the data you can use like df1 so this is how you can unpersist the data df1 dot unpersist okay and let's run it one more time all goes good so we have just unpersist the data and then we again persist the data all my data will go into the memory and disk level so what i need to do let me just refresh the browser one more time and let me see how it is looking like so in memory and disk what will happen exactly 
if the first of all it will try to you know store your data on the memory level only and whatever the data which is not getting stored on memory level then it will store it on disk level okay so can you see that all my data gets stored on my memory and but we have used the parameter called memory and disk so exactly as i said earlier since my data is very small it is stored on my memory otherwise all my data means some of the data which is fitted into the memory will get stored on memory and rest of the data will get stored on disk so this is how the program works for cache and persist so let me try to repeat it one more time so there are two techniques where you can store your data into the memory with the help of cache and persist now what is the difference between cache and persist cache don't have any argument okay it doesn't have it, it doesn't come with with any argument so by default it will be memory only okay it will be memory but if you are using the persist okay there are different different argument you can pass with the persist like memory memory disk serialization deserialization okay all those techniques you can use along with the persist now if you say that cache with memory only okay if you say that cache with memory only this is equals to the cache only okay if you say that persist with memory only it is just like the cache only okay so both the things are same at one extent so that is the main difference between cache and persist now if you want to unpersist the data let's say you think like okay i am done with my job i can use the method called unpersist by using this you can come to know about like how to unpersist the data and these are all things you can verify it on your spark ui that is the right way to check all your data okay so all right guys this is all about the difference between cache and unpersist if you have any query just let me know into the comment section and if you like this video please do like subscribe and share this channel bye bye see you again with the next entry question based upon the spark and how